2010, a 16-year-old named Khalif Browder was arrested in the Bronx for stealing a backpack. Refusing to plead guilty to a crime that he did not commit, he spent three years on Rikers Island. Two of those years were spent in restrictive housing. Although Khalif Browder did not enter Rikers Island with mental health problems, once he was released, he struggled with serious mental health issues and struggled to reintegrate back into his community. As a result, at age 22, he took his own life. Although Khalif Browder was not the first or the last person to be negatively impacted by restrictive housing, his case brought national attention to the harms of isolation. So what do I mean when I say restrictive housing? People in restrictive housing are locked in a cell for 22 to 24 hours a day with one or two hours outside of their cell for recreation or showering a few days a week. Restrictive housing is an inherently traumatic experience. People experience social isolation and sensory deprivation, and people with mental health problems may find their symptoms exacerbated, and people who don't have pre-existing mental health issues may find themselves struggling with mental health problems upon their release. People can spend anywhere from a few days to a few years in restrictive housing, during which time they must adapt to live in a world without people. Being released back into the general population or back into the community can be very jarring. Contrary to the belief that restrictive housing makes facilities safer, people who have experienced isolation have increased recidivism and increased violent behavior once they are released. In response to these problems, many facilities have implemented what are called step-down programs. Although step-down programs may look different from facility to facility, they generally operate on a level system, which gives people in isolation more privileges, such as increased out-of-cell time and increased opportunities for social interaction. And they may couple this with programming, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, which teaches people how to adapt back into the general population or back into the community once they are released. The vast majority of incarcerated people will return back to their communities, which means that the safer we make our prisons, the safer we make our communities. Mm -hmm.